Hey Frag Heads and Fragrance Lovers, welcome back. Benjamin here, Centaur Fragrance Channel, and today it's Prada Lunarosa Carbon on our hands. Yes, this is a blue fragrance. Is this the best blue fragrance of all time? Uh, maybe. Let's talk about it a little bit. Let me show you all the sprayer. Y'all want to see that I'm actually spraying my fragrances. I got you covered. Today, this is a mass appealing fragrance. If you don't think I covered designers enough or blue fragrances, here's a little bit of my ode or my song to you. Helping you smell great out there. It's a great one. This is a really great fragrance. I'm going to say it off the bat. I'm not even going to hide it. Fantastic fragrance. So first, first off, you're going to get bergamot off the top. Beautiful bergamot. Really sings. Beautiful citrusy. Uh, doesn't smell really lemony or crisp, but it blends in with the fragrance. There's some black pepper here, adding a little bit of its own crunch and, and tang. But really, the fragrance has a blue DNA. There's no getting away from that. This has some of the original feeling of the original Again, rose and musk is not really listed from the original Prada, you know, Luna Rosa type of DNA that's so beautiful. But there is a hint of that in that feeling and that styling behind the fragrance. And it works so well here. In my opinion, this fragrance has uh, been talked about over and over, so I don't want to get too much into the nitty gritty notes. Uh, but this fragrance here definitely was inspired by Sauvage. It's not a clone. I would not say that it's a direct clone, but it is inspired by it. It takes some of that blue DNA. And again, Sauvage copied Blue de Chanel, so ultimately, uh, you know, Blue de Chanel is the granddaddy of all the blue fragrances. Uh, but this one here. It's a standout fragrance. It's really well done. Why it's a little bit different is because in the heart there's some lavender. You know, some people, lavender is a make or break note. Uh, but re remember, Londoit de Lone by Yves Saint Laurent was mostly a cardamom lavender fragrance. Lavender is not a bad note. It's it's not, it can be modern, it can be sweet. There is some vintage lavender that's more dry and airy and uh, can be seem almost aggressive in its uh, persistence and how loud it can be. Uh, lavender here, I feel is very well blended. It's excellent. And there's also some unique coal and some mineral notes and some darker uh, kind of notes that almost give this fragrance a modern or pseudo smoky element. So this fragrance is a little bit dark and complex. And it, there are some watery notes. There is a very, uh, there is an aquatic element to this fragrance that really gives a little bit of interest. And then the, when the, as the fragrance dries down, you get this modern Ambroxan. It, the, the Ambroxan does smell a little bit like Sauvage. And again, with that blue shampoo type of vibe, there's a little bit of that sweetness. I do like that they went with this uh, almost darker type of fragrance, almost, that they went with black pepper off the top. Again, there's not a lot of it, but I like how this fragrance really comes together. I think it's pretty well blended. I think it's, uh, it's, it's mass appealing, but yet it's different. And I think that this is a very nice blue fragrance. I think this one's under the radar. It's not talked about. It doesn't hit the top 10 list as much as some of the other ones. There's still uh, people who talk about Sauvage to this day. and It still hits the top 10 list. I feel like this is a little bit easier to wear. A little bit easier to enjoy. And it just comes together in a really nice kind of way. Now, performance, we'll talk about that here just in a second, which is certainly going to be something y'all care about, especially if you want to get noticed and you want a mass appealing fragrance, which ultimately this is. But um, I do want to uh, point out that there's a, there's a little sparkle to this fragrance, and this not, is not inspired by Aventus, and it's really because of the Ambroxan or that ambergris-like quality. But it has a little bit of that sparkle, and I almost missed that from modern Aventus. I, I get nostalgic. But anyways, I like how the Ambroxan comes through with this fragrance. I know, again, this fragrance has lavender, and it ha this fragrance also has quite a bit of Ambroxan. So that's a make it or break it for some people. Uh, for some people, that's going to be a no-go uh, for, uh, you know, for either note. But I'm telling y'all, give this fragrance a chance. I don't think everybody has tried it, and it certainly is a fantastic release. Uh, so getting into that longevity, this is a fragrance that's going to give you that six, seven hour range. Maybe seven and a half if you spray it up on clothes. I think it'll get you through your day. It's not a strong, super strong performer. I would say it's about average or maybe a little bit above average projection. Siage is not really strong either. I would say it's average, maybe slightly above average. It does what it needs to do. It certainly does a respectable job, maybe even a fantastic job. And overall, for what it is, it's never intrusive or never too loud. I like the performance here. I know some people would like another extra hour of longevity, but this fragrance does what it does. And uh, it manages to be safe and likable and still have a personality all at the same time, which is always a good fragrance. That, that's a good combination. And that tends to sell very well, just like, you know, Dolce Gabbana the One did, uh, kind of for those kinds of reasons. Uh, so... 
really nice fragrance. I think it, again, flew under the radar. It was a little bit criticized or just avoided, just like Versace's Dylan Blue. Again, if you like Sauvage, or maybe you've never bought Sauvage, or maybe you were just ran out of your bottle of Sauvage, and you're contemplating maybe switching over to possibly something, it's, I certainly would give this one a try. And of course, Versace Dylan Blue, which Versace Dylan Blue is a bit sweeter and richer, and I've reviewed that one before, but certainly give it a try as well. So overall, this is a really nice release. Compliment factor wise, this is certainly a compliment getter. Um, is it a big, as a big of a compliment getter as Sauvage? Maybe not as much because it doesn't project as much. And in the dry down, you get more of that ambergris musky. It's almost sensual. Uh, it comes off. It's almost aggressive. It projects so much. And I feel like some of the people who wear Sauvage, especially the EDT, might be a little bit more bubbly and outgoing and really social around crowds of people. Uh, so maybe those kinds of people wearing Sauvage, the EDT version, will get the compliments. Uh, but this is no slouch either. This is a this is a solid fragrance. This is for somebody who you know still wants to get out there, still wants to get noticed. Maybe is a little bit more studious. Maybe studies a little bit better. Not maybe you're not. Maybe you do like to party, but maybe you're not a party beast. Maybe you got a little bit of a mysterious element about you. There's a, you you got a little bit of an edge about you. Maybe you like to be edgy. I, I don't know, but this is certainly a good fragrance, uh, and I think it's needed in the fragrance community. It's solid. It does something different as well, and for a mass-appealing fragrance, this is certainly one of the best on the market. Also, because of these darker elements with this fragrance, I think that if you like Aqua di Gio Profumo, uh, this is certainly something that's worth trying. Maybe this would be a little bit safer. I mean, Aqua di Gio Profumo is safe enough. I'm not trying to say it's not wearable. But this is certainly, uh, you could easily get away with this at the office if you like that vibe. And you certainly, maybe if you're going on a flight, uh, you know, you're going to the airport or whatever situation, you might want to be a little bit more sensitive. This works. But again, it's not a weak fragrance. It, it does its job for sure. So compliment factor wise, this one is a little bit charming. It's a little bit seductive in its own little way. It's not going to, I don't think it'll have people chasing you down, but uh it certainly, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt at all. So uh, one of my final thoughts with this fragrance, I think the price is right. Uh, I think that not everybody has a Prada in their collection. Yeah, there's the Y, the Y Parfum, and you might ask, why would I get this uh, when I could get the new Y Eau, Eau de Parfum? The Y Eau de Parfum is a little bit more Sauvage-like. It's a little bit sweeter, it's a little bit heavier, um, and it uses a lot of that modern amber wood. And I guess the difference is going to be, for most people, do you want something that smells like a more unique fragrance that's fresh and uh, still has some of that Prado, you know, Lunarosa DNA with it that's musky and almost rose-like and has a, a, this has a really nice smoothness about it? Or do you want something that's more Sauvage-like and has that ginger and almost like a, a, a hint or a little, a little snap of florals in there in that YSL Y Parfum? Um, I guess it depends on what you like. I feel like this has more elements and intrigue. It's not an overtly complex fragrance, but there's certainly something, uh, to, at least for me, that draws me more to this fragrance. Uh, so let me know. Uh, what Have y'all smelled this fragrance? Have you tried, you know, Prada Luna Rosa? <laughs> this one here, the carbon. I, again, I like the idea of the carbon note. I like the idea of the coal and the darker notes and that and a little bit of those darker elements i think that's a fantastic idea and they were able to pull it off in a really good way so let me know everybody let me know did i do a good job in my fragrance review today here did you like my review and um, i'll catch you in the next review have a beautiful day everybody stay safe stay beautiful It'll be smelling great and comment in the com you know put in the comment section what is your favorite blue fragrance do you like this one is it worth the money is it worth trying and, um, you know, let me know, I guess, uh, which one has got you the most reactions? Or do you think blue fragrances are overrated? Do you think that they give you compliments at all? So I'll see you next soon, everybody. Have a beautiful day. Y'all know, know how to help me down below if you'd like to do that. And I'll see you soon, everybody. Peace out. Have a beautiful day. I'll smell you later in the next episode. And I'll see you soon, everybody. Peace out and bye.